Welcome. You're listening to Outside the Four Walls with Tony Myers, providing you teachings that will bring Christ into your daily life. Christ in us, the expectation of glory. Now, let's hear today's message. What if healing were so easy that anyone could be healed, that anyone can heal? What if a person who was a former atheist could pray for himself without having studied scriptures, declare his own healing, and be healed from Lou Gehrig's disease? What if? Oftentimes, we make healing so difficult. We bring in so many rules, so many traditions of men that aren't there. Jesus put only one stipulation, believe only. Oftentimes, so many of us are guilty of making healing and deliverance so complex. When we walk into healing with an expectation that we've got to be in constant warfare, the devil's going to try to steal it away from us. The higher level, the bigger the devil. All of these things, while there is truth to them, it also complicates it and gets us to think healing is so difficult that we've got to fight and fight and fight. All the crowds Jesus healed. There was no fight. There was no struggle. The truth is an overcomer in and of itself. When you know the truth, the truth wins every time. We have got to get rid of all these traditions that say you won't be healed if, 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 if. The only thing Jesus tells us is unbelief, not believing, not taking the fact he paid for our healing by his body at the cross, at the whipping post, from A to Z, that whole time period of his crucifixion from the garden to his resurrection, it's done. That is an unquestionable fact. Therefore, there is nothing that can come against that when we believe. The only thing is, we come into unbelief. The deceiver who works through our physical senses tries to convince us of a lie. A little girl, nine years old, prays for a person. Instantly, they get healed. A young boy, five years old, walks up, says, you're healed. The person gets healed. Tony Myers, does that name sound familiar? Paralyzed, dying, Lou Gehrig's disease, among other things, says the Lord loves me, says back pain leave, says fingers move, says legs move, gets up and walks. Let's look at those things. If something could come against a healing, guess what? I was prime beef. I was a perfect target. I had no scriptural knowledge. Just minutes before, I had been trying to figure out how to kill myself, yet I was healed that quickly, that easily. Healing and deliverance. I was delivered too. I had more demons in legion. I am quite sure of that. I was not thinking properly at all. How long did it take and what did it take? The love of Christ, that was it. We make healing and deliverance too difficult, too many rules. We have people walking around teaching healing and deliverance that honestly don't have a clue what they're talking about. I've heard it time and time again. They pose themselves as experts, and that's not what this is about. We're going to turn this around. This is about the simplicity that we have in Christ. So let's look at how available healing is in the Gospels. In Mark 9, 38 through 39, And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed not us. And we forbade him, because he followeth not us. But Jesus said, Forbiddeth him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. 
right there. This person had no part with Jesus, yet Jesus said, let him be. Anyone can pray for the sick and see them healed. Luke 10, 1 through 3. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Where was the ten-hour class? Where was the ten-hour class with the twelve disciples? No. Go pray for him. See him healed right now. That's the bottom line. Only believe. In Acts, this is how simple it is. Okay, I've talked about the four miracles only the Messiah could perform. You take those out of the gospel and you're left with what? The ones who had the faith in the person standing in front of them, Christ Jesus. Now we have the spirit of faith. It's not a matter of getting more faith. It's a matter of empowering the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of faith, empowering him with we are healed that's an unquestionable fact quit questioning it and expecting with eager expectation that when we need healing for ourselves it's already available 2407 when we are trying to help another person receive their healing it's already available 2407 end of story Let's see how available it is. In Acts 5:15 through 17, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that the shadow of P Peter passing by might order overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. That's how available healing is. Acts 19:12. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. The napkins did not ask the demons their name. The napkins did not ask the sick person, how many sins have you committed? Have you ever been into witchcraft? Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? And spent 20 hours going over all the person's life. The handkerchiefs and aprons did not do that. That's how available healing is. Now, since healing is so available that a young child can walk up to somebody that a former atheist can be healed himself, since is that available? There is a warning. Just because somebody is seeing massive amounts of people healed does not mean God is confirming them. Once again, just because somebody is seeing lots of miracles does not mean God is confirming them. Do not put people on a pedestal until you know they are operating with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's why we're given the fruits and listed the fruits. And the biggest one is love. So many people can be doing this for selfish reasons to put another notch on their belt. And time and time again, we do see this, and we do see somebody that doesn't have a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ seeing many miracles. But because of the miracles, we put them on a pedestal and listen to every word they say. This is how false beliefs come about. This is how things get complicated. Healing has nothing to do with our actions and everything to do with the action Christ took at the cross. We have to remember that. So just because we hear somebody's healing a ton of people, it does not mean they are living a sanctified lifestyle with the fruits of the Spirit. 
Once again, it's how available Jesus and the loving Father made healing. So we get this warning. And this warning is in Matthew 7, 22 through 24. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye, ye that work iniquity. This was Jesus talking about the Pharisees. They were seeing demons delivered. They were seeing the sick healed. Yet they did not know him. As Jesus pointed out many times, nor did they know the Father because they did not know him. There was no personal relationship involved, yet Jesus does not say that the miracles were not of him. Jesus did not say the miracles were not of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not say the miracles were not of God. He did not say that. He says, I never knew you. In other words, they had no personal relationship. Look for the fruits of those you learn from. No fruit, don't learn from them. It's that simple. This is not a warning not to pray for the sick. We are told to pray for the sick. Jesus does not contradict himself. This is a warning that just because somebody is operating in godly miracles does not mean they have a personal relationship. It does not mean unequivocally that you are to follow their every word and that they have a clue what they're talking about. That is how available healing is. That is how available the Lord Jesus Christ and the loving Father and Holy Spirit made healing. Look at the fruit. Is there love? By this you will know. So this verse does two things. It gives us a warning and it confirms how available it is to see people healed and to be healed. These people did not have relationship with Christ, yet they performed miracles. They performed healings. That's how available it is. So I want to encourage every person with that. It is available. I also want to encourage, look for the fruits of Holy Spirit. Don't follow somebody just because they see thousands, hundreds of miracles. That is not enough. Look for fruit. Be encouraged. You can be healed right now, right where you sit. You've got the Holy Spirit in you. He is happy to see you healed. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. When you believe you're healed, you are healed. Thank you, Jesus. God bless every one of you. In Jesus' name, be healed, be delivered. Right now, I speak against any obstacle in your life. You are healed right now. Get up and walk. Start talking. Start hearing. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears hear. Lame walk. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing. You've been listening to Outside the Four Walls with Tony Myers. We hope this teaching has touched your life in such a way that will glorify God and increase your expectation on His promises daily. Outside the Four Walls is a listener-supported ministry. To donate to this program or to connect with Tony Myers, visit his website, at TonyBelieves.com or drop Tony an email at TonyJustBelieves at gmail.com You can also find Tony on Facebook at TonyJustBelieves As you go out today, be blessed, be healed, and be a blessing.